guys, today's video is starting out at the post office. But <laughs> anyway, today I'm going to be getting a little bit nerdy on the Project TT. And if you wanna get caught up on this car and you haven't seen any of my past videos on it, there's a link up above to get you caught up. But today I'm gonna to be working on electrical issues and I'm gonna be getting a little bit nerdy <laughs> on the car. So I'm gonna be hooking on my laptop and using some software to read the codes that this thing has. And then we're gonna see what sensors need to be replaced and possibly other components. First, I'm gonna go check my mail, see if y'all sent me anything to my P.O. box. That's a lot of boxes. I'm starting to think this post office doesn't like me because I check my mail twice a week and every time I come here, I have tons of packages and they're like, Finally. <laughs> Weeble. Thanks, Tony, for the license plate. Oh, and check this out. These lines right here? Yeah, I got my clutch line back for the MR2. They did an awesome job making it. It was kind of expensive. It was like 100 bucks to have it made. It's a really expensive clutch line, but it was done. It looks good, and I don't have to worry about it now. I can just put it on the car. Ugh. Tight quarters getting in here. All right, so I have two ways of going about this. I have a little Bluetooth dongle that I could try hooking up and using my phone. What I'm going to use is this OBD2 cable that actually one of you guys sent it to me and I'm going to hook this up to my MacBook so I'm going to have to find a software that works with Mac. Man, it's thundering so loud out there. Forrester Gump's parked outside. He's going to get rained on. Poor Forrester Gump. So this is going to be interesting. I can't use Rostec BCDS because I have a Mac. I'm gonna try to download it and see what happens, but I don't think it's gonna work. <laughs> so hard getting in here. All right, backup plan. I had an old Android tablet. I totally forgot about this thing. So, we'll try this. This should have a USB port on it. Maybe it's under this. Yeah, buddy. So we'll give this a shot and see if this works. I'm literally doing this out of the camera screen. I don't know where it is. <laughs> there you go. Yar, here she be. So let's get this downloaded. VCDS. Ooh, this might be my tuning tablet if this works. Oh, by the way, we're gonna do a little bit of mail time in this video at the end of the video, just so you know, but I encourage you to stay and watch. I do. Why won't it work? It says interface not found or something. I don't know what that means. Back to the drawing board. Go this way. There we go. The drawing board says try the Bluetooth jigger. So I was able to get the Bluetooth dongle to work on the tablet. I think it says it's paired. But the VCDS software is not reading. Like it can't find the device and it asks for like an IP address and I don't even know what that means. I think I'm literally downloading like the 10th program now to try to get something to read these codes. Connecting to OBD2. Um, now it's connected. Fault codes. I have four logged fault codes. So I have P118, Volkswagen, O2 sensor heat circuit. Okay. This one, turbocharger, throttle valve, pressure hose. Next one is sensor two, internal resistance too high, bank one. P0140, this one says O2 sensor, no activity detected, bank one, sensor two. Okay, well, I'll try clearing the faults. I guess they're cleared. 
doesn't really give you an indication whether they are or not. This app doesn't really work that great. Okay, here goes nothing. I still have my ABS light on. I, uh, I need to check the new sensors I changed out when I changed out the wheel speed sensors because it was gone and then I drove the car a little bit and then it came back on. So I'm wondering if it just picked up a bunch of rust debris and it's clogging up the magnets on the sensors now. I want to drive this thing down the road to see what codes come back. It looks like just that P1118 code is the only one that's coming back but the new downpipe that we put on the car in two videos ago. Because I don't have a catback exhaust yet, the mid pipe isn't supported because there's no spot for a hanger on there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a hanger and I'm going to support that end so it's not like wobbling around too much. That way I can take it for a drive down the street and see what DTCs come back. Check out these ABS sensors real quick. And um, I'm just gonna wipe them off. They're just two little magnets, that's how they work. They read a disc that has like gaps within the disc and then it calculates the speed in which the gap and that metal go by the magnets or something, I don't know. I think of it as like a magnetic pickup on a diesel generator. I think it's similar in the way that circuit works, I think. Oh. So now if you guys can see, the ABS sensor is completely covered in rust. Really covered in rust. I bet you that's why this thing was throwing a code. I wiped it off, but you can see both sensors. I did the other one off camera just because I don't think you guys need to see me do it twice. But yeah, both sensors were covered in absolute crap. Seat belt. Hopefully the ABS light goes away. I mean, that was a lot of crap that was on the sensor, so. All that's showing up on the gauge cluster right now is the ABS light. No check engine light yet. The oil alarm is on though, so I gotta change out that sensor. No check engine light yet. I mean, it is gonna come back, we know that, but. I'm gonna get on it a little bit. It's kind of slow. Okay, let's see what comes back. What codes come back? Let's see, DTCs, what do we got? So I just installed this app right here. It's Motor Data OBD2. I figured I'd give this one a shot and see. We have, drum roll please. Three codes, three codes came back. So it means one of those codes went away and never came back. So there are the codes that are showing up on here. Clear. Clear. Okay, should be nothing popping up on the gauge cluster. That's it up. ABS light is not on, but when I put my foot to the floor, the ABS is definitely not working correctly. Oh, there it goes. ABS light came back on. So I feel kind of dumb. I know why I have the trouble code 1297 now. Pop the hood, I'm not even gonna pick it up. I'm just gonna show you, I just popped the hood and I have not touched this yet. I blew a hose off. I swear to you, I have not touched this. I literally opened the hood and it was just sitting here. It goes from the charge pipe to the factory diverter valve, or factory blow off valve, whatever. So I have a feeling if we put that back on there and uh, clear the codes, that one will probably not come back, I think. That's probably why it was idling like poop too. So, oh, speaking of which, not poop, but um, so I ordered this stuff right here, some DEI, um, it's for hoses. It's like a little Velcro wrap that you put around your hoses. I thought it came with a lot more for how much I paid for it, but it doesn't come with very much. It comes with like a couple feet, maybe like three feet. I'm gonna trim this off camera because I don't have any place to set it down and record. Sorry, 
Let me cut this real quick. It's like a little robotic Loch Ness monster. Or it looks like E.T. It's like E.T. in his little space blanket. I'm weird. All right, this thing's good to go. So now I can stick it on the old engine. All right, there we go. I got it on there. I put the Velcro facing away from the charge pipe since the charge pipe is the hottest surface, hence the little don't touch hand. It's kind of hard to get it to fit around this bend right here, but I made do. So it sucks I don't have um, some heat protectant wrap for this little hose up here. That piece is just too big. So at least it's on there now, like factory, that's how it was. And then I got my engine cover. Da da da. That will go over it like that. I just don't have any of the hardware, so I gotta get hardware for it. We'll give this a shot. should be watching right now I actually filmed yesterday it was a car review of a 1967 Buick Riviera GS oh it's not bad <laughs> It was the first old car I've ever filmed on my channel, but the problem is when I was filming it yesterday, it was like 102, 103, something like that. It was also really humid on top of that, but uh, my camera overheated while I was filming and I didn't think anything of it. I thought it would be fine. And when I got home to edit the video, half the files were corrupted on the camera. I recovered most of them, but the ones I couldn't recover was like the intro and the first part of the car talking about the car itself and all that was left was a clip of me driving it. So today's video is kind of like in a, a pinch. I was trying to do something that was less time consuming. That's why I'm not doing any heavy wrenching on the car because I kind of screwed myself and didn't have anything ready to edit to put up for you guys. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm going to do mail time now that I have geeked out a little bit on the TT and know that none of the codes that it's throwing are anything I really am worried about because that will be taken care of when I put a tune on it. Sorry, sometimes equipment fails. So I don't know what this is, but it's a large tube. It's a heavy tube. A multi tool, multi tool. What do we got in here? See if I can do this without cutting an appendage off. Ugh. Ugh. Oh, thank you, Scott. This is awesome. I have actual breaker bars, big breaker bars. One is 3 h drive, one is half inch drive. All right, no more pump handle, I promise. Unless I still can't get it with this, then I'll use a pump handle on this. Hmm. Next package. There's letters on the front. I think you scammed the postal service by taping the letter to the outside of the, the package. You guys don't have to send receipts with stuff when you send me stuff. I'm not gonna return it. I'm not one of those people that gets a Christmas gift and returns it because that's not nice. Here's a sales receipt. Oh, in case it doesn't work. That's why you sent the receipt. You're smart. This is so awesome. A work light. It's from DC Carlson. Thank you for the work light. Oh, there's another letter on top. Oh, it's a card. Oh, it's so cute. I hope you like the drop light and use it. I will. Oh, I'll read this off camera. This is so cute. Next box. Box. The Hello Kitty's in here. A gift from a grumpy old man. What did you send me? Shut up. Shut up. No way. Oh my god. Oh man. Oh, I'm gonna cry. Oh, I can't. I'm gonna cry. I'm so happy. Thank you so much. Oh. Um, he sent me a bunch of GoPros, which I desperately have been needing on this channel because when I film, I'm literally moving my DSLR camera all over the place, which is really sketchy sticking underneath a car to film because it's like a 12, well, when I bought it brand new, it was like a $1,200 camera and, uh, yeah, that's not what that camera is meant for. So I've been needing some GoPros. That is so nice. What? It's a endoscope. To stick up your 
It's an AVE shirt. Yeah, I, mean, I, okay, I don't know if I can show this on YouTube. Oh my god, this is so funny. Thank you so much. I really like the AVE shirts because I think AVE is really funny too. Oh, that's some crazy thunder out there. Crazy thunder. I do have some letters that I received, but I'm not gonna put the letters in the video just because it would make for a really long YouTube video. Just keep in mind, I do read every single letter you guys send me, and I do read pretty much every single comment in the comment section. It's really hard to keep up with all the messages. So this package is some absorbents. I know these all too well from the Air Force. Oh, snap! I'm gonna be able to use this in the next video. Literally the next video, I will be using this. Brake line forming bender. Oh, okay, another type of bender. I used to use these all the time in the Air Force when working on like bomb lifts and stuff like that. I used to use these wrenches a lot, so. Sarah found the AVE shirts. She likes AVE also. I love him. He's so like satisfying to watch. It's so Skookum. satisfying, I don't know. Like, and he's so knowledgeable. Skookum is frig. Sarah, no more Sarah. I'm gonna ask if you tried Uber Eats yet. Uber Eats? They like send you whatever you want. So this one is a glove box. It's like one of those little package things, like how Macbeth, she does a shift box. I showed up my channel, my friend Macbeth, she has a little shift box thingies. So it's like those boxes where you get goods in them. And who else does one? Smurf and WRX, that dude, I think he does one too. Mike, Mike Nugen, Nugen, is that his name? I don't know. So it came with a glass care towel. It's award winning. Mm. Eliminates. Oh, that's so smart. So you put this under your tire, and it's it's the stop hoses and stuff from going under your tire while you're working on a car. I need this when I'm washing cars. The hose usually gets trapped. Yes. So okay. this is gonna come in super handy. Oh, cool! It's some Adams. I've never used Adams before. Limitless leather. I gotta start reaching out to companies, like performance part companies and see if I can sponsor the build on these project cars so they're not so janky. So thank you for the glove box. That's a really cool idea. I like those those boxes. I used to do the Ipsy bags. Well, thank you guys for all the stuff that you sent me. That was incredibly sweet and this stuff definitely goes to use on working on these cars since I'm doing this all out of my garage and not some big fancy shop. Okay, I'll see you guys soon with another video. Bye! Bye.